Good afternoon, everybody. This is Craig Moody, uh, Managing Principal, Co-Owner of Veritas Group. Um, I am excited to be here this afternoon. I'm excited that it's February. Uh, and today I wanted to talk to you, <coughs> excuse me, about everything that's going on in the healthcare industry related to climate. Um, there's a lot. Uh, we're not going to talk about all of it in detail today. Uh, I think what I want to start with is to really reemphasize how inextricably linked climate change is with public health. Uh, we work in the healthcare sector. Uh, Nebraska Medicine and Methodist Health Systems are both clients of ours and have been for a very, very long time. Uh, so we get an opportunity to see very firsthand um, the work that they are doing and the connections that they're drawing between the climate crisis and public health. Uh, naturally, both of their missions are very much aligned with uh, <clears throat> a, a, a more positive version of, of public health, and so uh, they're doing great work. Um, climate change is having many, many implications for public health, and, and uh, there, there are many, and I'm not going to go through them all, but what I want to talk about today is the connection between climate change and pollution and air pollution. Uh, they're not necessarily the same, uh, but the activities that drive them both uh, are often the same. So in other words, uh, there are pollutants that occur as a result of burning fossil fuels um, that uh, aren't necessarily greenhouse gas uh, emissions, but uh, they are not good for us. Uh, they're, they're, uh, and so, um, because the activities that are driving them are for the most part the same, uh, the activities that organizations are undertaking to reduce greenhouse gas emissions are also reducing pollutants naturally. Uh, perhaps this is super obvious, uh, but, but it's, it's a difference that I think is important and a lot of organizations and people forget about um, the pollutants that don't get talked a, a lot about. And, and they're super important. The WHO estimates that an estimated 7 million people per year worldwide die as a result of um, pollution. 99% uh, of people breathe air that exceeds the WHO's guideline limits. So uh, what is in our air, both inside air and outside air, is not necessarily that good for us. And, and again, a lot of those pollutants are being driven by the activities that are similar to what's driving um, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, these deaths uh, are often, um, the, or the, excuse me, this, this increased mortality rate uh, is a result of stroke, heart disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, lung cancer, acute respiratory infections, so on and so forth. So there's undeniably a pretty strong connection. Uh, there's also a, an interesting study that we tracked down recently that was, uh, that identified more than 8 million people died in 2008 from fossil fuel pr pollution. Uh, which is significantly higher than previous research had suggested, meaning that air pollution from the burning of fossil fuels um, is responsible for about one in five deaths worldwide. One in five. One in five. That's that's uh, pretty substantial to me. So it's this connection. Uh, that's the reason why healthcare organizations are really, really dialed in on this in, in a way that we've never seen before. As I mentioned, a couple of our clients, Nebraska Meth, Meth excuse me, Nebraska Medicine and Methodist Health Systems, both have uh, goals to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions. And then, and then there's another one that uh, we were uh, we found really impressive. Common Spirit, one of the largest healthcare organizations in in the country, set a, a goal to be net zero by 2040. Um, so what we're seeing, and this is not unique to the healthcare industry, is that many are setting goals uh, and increasingly aggressive goals, which is great. Uh, and we're really happy to see those getting set. Um, but as we've talked about before, it's time for action. Uh, and so we're really excited uh, for, to see that many of our clients are really starting to lean into pretty substantial and meaningful action uh, that we're really helping them map out so that they can have a meaningful impact. Net zero is not going to be achieved simply by energy efficiency measures. Uh, it's not going to be achieved simply by um, watching your electric utility migrate to cleaner fuels, which is happening. Both are happening. It's not going to be achieved simply by electrification. Uh, 
that's not possible for a lot of healthcare institutions in particular. Uh, fossil fuels are, are likely going to continue to be on site for many of these institutions. So the question then becomes, what are the different ways in which uh, a healthcare organization can get down to zero? And when could that happen? That's really where our net zero pathway process comes in. We've talked about this uh, with you many times before, and uh, I wanted to highlight it once again, because it does, again, provide extraordinary clarity for how a healthcare institution can meet its goal. Once the goal is set, uh, this is one way to do that. And in fact, our net zero pathway process can be the tool that you use to inform the goal, right? So in other words, Yes, let's set some science-based targets. Undeniably, that's super important, but perhaps there's an opportunity to do it faster than what science is really calling us for, calling us to do. Uh, and our net zero pathway will, will, will really help organization, organizations map out what their emissions are today, uh, what they can do to drive down those emissions over time, when the right time to take those actions are, and what impact it's going to have from an emission standpoint, from a pollution standpoint, those co-benefits, uh, and from a financial standpoint. So I encourage you all to take a look at our Net Zero Pathway program. Um, it's something that's been extraordinary, extraordinarily popular uh, in the last six months. We're doing a lot of that kind of work. And if you or your organization are kind of wondering uh, where to get started, what to do first. It is, it is a great, great way for uh, us to help you get that clarity. Check us out at veritasgroup.com. Uh, we are on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Uh, I'm at uh, craig at veritasgroup.com. That's my email address. Would love to have any, any or all of you reach out. Uh, thanks for everything. Have a wonderful, wonderful Monday. Have a great February, everybody. Take care.